So on the borrowed part of old, new, borrowed, and blue, your new disc, um, I wanted to kind of focus on potentially the impact of uh, someone uh, who uh, you uh, state as a mentor to you uh, on uh, guitar, Joe Pass. Can you tell us some of the things uh, that, uh, first tell us a little bit about your relationship with Joe, and then I want to get into potentially some things you may have borrowed that uh, we feature on the disc, uh -huh. that you feature on the disc that reflect Joe. I met Joe in 1974 in Boston. I took my father to the jazz workshop in Boston to hear him play solo. So we sat for the whole evening and, and you know, marveled at his, his ability to, I just, he was, I was already a big fan of his. And so afterwards we went back and I introduced myself and I asked him if it would be possible to take a lesson. He was staying across the street in the Hotel Lent, um, which is, oddly enough, where my mother and father had their honeymoon. So there he is and he says, oh yeah, I don't have any girlfriends or whatever he said to me. And I said, come on over tomorrow and come for breakfast or whatever. So I, that was on a Friday night, on Saturday I drove and got there and he met me in the lobby and we had breakfast together and then we went up to his room and I, I took a lesson. It's like, I don't know, two hours or something. But I sat there and he basically said, well, play something. <laughs> <laughs> Which is, you know, kind of a lot of pressure. From mm -hmm. So play I played you. something and he knew I had graduated from Berkeley so he was a little bit kind of leery of, well, what do you want from me kind of thing. And he said, well, that's, uh, what's wrong with that? <laughs> well, I said, well, you know, it's not that it's anything wrong. I just wanted, you know, your input and I played Little Darling or something like that. That was one of the things that he had recorded and that I had spent some time with. So that just kind of opened the door to a bunch of things to discuss about those recordings. Um, and actually, Ode to Billy Joe, which is on this recording, was on one of his records. It's a trio record called Intercontinental. It's like one of the great trio guitar records of all time for me. And so that's basically kind of where that's borrowed from. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit of a different treatment. I did it more like a boogaloo kind of treatment because I have the organ trio, which is, you know, boogaloo is like certainly it's one of those organisms that's right just you, you got to do a little it bit. works with the organ yeah. so you know that his was more kind of like a bossa kind of treatment but you know again it inspired me just because it's, it's you know that was such a landmark record for me mm -hmm. well and then um were, what were your particular what would be your particular characterization of joe pass's uh styles or or, or sing things of his playing that made him unique that you uh kind of really looked for? Well, the, you know, the original, like the first recording, again, was Intercontinental, which was a trio record. So when you're just guitar and bass and drums, there's a lot of space, you know, and, and it's a lot of responsibility for a guitarist to take on. And so for me, at that time in my development, it was like, that was the holy grail, or the, you know, the, the, the thing about the mountain. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't remember the metaphor, but anyway. That was the top of the mountain, <laughs> the Sermon on the Mountain. Yeah, uh, yeah, one of those, one of those anyway, things. so that was for me kind of a goal, something that I wanted to get to the point where I felt comfortable playing with just bass and drums. So, you know, the combination of that and then later on he became very well known as just a solo guitar player and that was again something that I just thought, boy, that's just got to be the most difficult thing you can do. And it is. Right. <laughs> it's very difficult to sit there and play a whole set of music alone mm -hmm. or even a whole song alone. So, you know, he really inspired me to kind of go for that whole thing, in addition to the wonderful recordings that he has where he's with Oscar Peterson and there's a rhythm section and a whole band. Well, you know, that was a different setting for him, but he really just took that whole solo guitar and trio thing to a real just high level. Mm -hmm. Well, um, let's touch on blue then, the uh, the final of the four uh, four uh, characteristics of the new disc, uh, old, new, borrowed, and blue. Um, uh, how important is it for, you're an educator uh, um, in jazz, how important is it for uh, young musicians uh, that are coming up to understand the blues and be able to play that style and understand it to be able to get jazz and, and to play jazz? It's a huge component. I teach a course that I wrote that's called Jazz Guitar Arranging and Improvisation. And the first thing that we focus on for several weeks is just blues. And, you know, most of them, they're juniors by the time they get in that class, and most of them kind of come in thinking, well, I, you know, I can play the blues. It's all right, well, you can play the blues to some degree, but it's a sort of a, a jumping off point for me in terms of talking about harmonic embellishment. And the blues is a great place to start because, first of all, it's a 12 bar, it's a short form, and there's so much harmonically that you can do with the blues in addition to just, you know, the basic three chord kind of thing. It's like that's just a whole world of knowledge that starts to open up a whole bunch of options to them that they can then take and apply to longer forms and standards and jazz classics and all that stuff. So it's a great place to start because it's a form that, you know, even my dog can keep his place <laughs> in a blues form. <laughs> well, um, can you can you relate uh, a particular tune or two on the new disc to the blues? 
Well, Party Time is a minor blues, the way it turns out, and it's like, um, it's a Lee Morgan tune, and it's just been one of my favorites for years. I always liked the line, and, you know, the fact that it's a minor blues form happens to be, you know, sort of a big part of what, why that one was in that category, and then, um, Ode to Billy Joe is, it's not a blues per se, it's like a 16-bar progression, but it's very bluesy in that it's basically kind of, you know, the sort of the one chord, the four chord, the five chord kind of thing, so the same basic elements. Mm -hmm. So, again, that's something that kind of knit its way through the record to the point where, you know, when I finally needed the title, it just all, all, all of a sudden kind so of came to me. And then somebody said, I can't remember, it's some couple of different rock guys that called their record old blue bar <laughs> blue too. <laughs> so, well, so and so already did that. And I said, well, I mean, you didn't do these tunes. You know. So there you go. <laughs> well, um, so the new disc's out. I'm sure you're going to be playing some dates uh, like you are now, uh, featuring the band and, and, and the disc. What other projects are you working on? Well, at this point, I'm I'm trying to finish a couple of different books that I'm writing. Um, I teach at the University of Southern California, and we started a whole um, Thornton guitar series from Mel Beck, which is you know, the biggest publisher of guitar materials in the world. So I'm pathetically late on several projects that I'm doing for that, so I'm, I'm going to finish one up later this week, and I have two or three more that I'm trying to finish through the summer. And then this record just came out, so now I'm actually getting a chance to go out and be a musician and a guitar player and a sort of traveling person at large. Well, um, where can folks find out more information about uh, about yourself and your uh, itinerary and where you're going to be playing? Well, everything's there on my website, which is just my name, frankpotenza.com. Well, Frank, uh, it's been a pleasure to chat with you, and uh, best of luck with the new disc. And uh, thanks again for coming to Jazz Live San Diego. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's our pleasure to be here again. I hope you get a chance to come back and